will go hop, skip through the decades. The 40s would be uh, Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, Lester Young, Joe Turner, Brownie Stick McGee. The 50s would be the Coasters, the Clovers, the Drifters, John Coltrane, the Modern Jazz Quartet, Bobby Darin. I mean, the, the field gets wider and wider. Uh, we get into the 60s, Sonny and Cher, Solomon Burke, Wilson Pickett. Then we get into the Stax contingent, uh, Otis, Rufus Thomas. And then we get into Cream and Aretha. Oh, the 50s, how, oh God, Ray Charles. Okay, <laughs> they can't run it by that one. Uh, then we get into the 70s, and now I'm into the Allman Brothers, Leonard Skinner, Rod Stewart, CSN. We get into the 80s, and I'm Dexy's Midnight Runner and more Eric Clapton permutation number four. I mean, from Disraeli Gears to Derek and the Dominoes to Eric Clapton to Eric Clapton to Eric Clapton. Over the span of time that there's been my history with the recording industry, I have gone from spontaneous, live, instantaneous music, where you had to go direct to disc. There were no tape machines. And I've gone through the whole revolution to now, where a young person can go into Toys R Us or some kind of store of that nature and buy an inexpensive computer and make music. And that's a new art form. The new method of recording and storing information digital is a new art form. The fact that they've eliminated tubes is a step forward. I mean, you wouldn't want to go back to flying a Piper Cub across the ocean if you can get on a 747. It's a new art form. It's a new method. But you can't recreate or do anything that sounds like what the old things were done because of the nature of the equipment difference, the mentality difference, the attitude difference. Too many people today record an instrument one at a time. They use samples, they cheat, they add echo, they do all kinds of things like this, trying to emulate things that are past. If you use today's transistorized amplifiers, you're not gonna get the same effect. You can't. Because here, depending on how loud he plays, how much vibration comes out of the tube generating the sound and going back into the tube and rattling the tube, you don't have that consideration with transistors and new vistas and chips today. And when, as long as you're using old tube equipment, you have this impossible to replicate <laughs> performance each time you play because the tubes keep on changing in value. They keep on changing in, in amount of harmonic distortion because they're aging by the minute. And yet there are those charismatic moments where everything is like spot on, exactly. I refuse to record where I'm layering. I insist on recording where I get two, three, four, five, seven, ten people live. And they must play simultaneously because the spontaneity, the intonation, the time differences, somebody plays something and it inspires something else, that's music. The kind of music I prefer, the music I like. Blues singers seldom ever sang the same song the same way. They sing the same words, but they wouldn't express it the same way. Jazz musicians, uh, they, they make three or four versions of the same song, one in back of the other, like five minutes apart. The solos are all different. That's the spontaneity, and the support is different. That's, that's the beauty of what we're doing. Hey, if I don't like a project, I'm not going to do it. If I don't think I can make a contribution, or if it's something that I don't have an empathy sitting here for hours doing, what am I doing here? Go home. Okay, there's some songs that I can give input on. There are others that when they go by, I think, I better just accept that the way it is because I don't, it's, it's not anything that I am sensitive to that I would make constructive criticism, so I'll just shush. And then there are other things that they do and I say, oh, we're starting in the wrong place, or let me come out there and I'll cue you and I'll go out and conduct or direct part changes or tell one person, drop out here and I'll count when they should come back in. Spontaneity. I mean, I'm have, I have a formula in mind, but I'm trying to affect them that I shake them up that Oops, there's a little tension that wasn't there when they were doing it the same way they did it last week. I like to unnerve them a little bit to get tension. Because if they're playing the same thing that they've been playing for the last month getting ready to record, they get into a confident, smooth groove, and it might, not, it might be the best way to do the song. And yet, if we just shake them, you know, a grain of sand in an oyster shell and you have a pearl. 
You just shake them one time. <laughs> it might make the difference. Music is like that. The music, the entertainment business is ongoing, forever changing, stimulating. It's stimulating. It's invigorating. I enjoy it thoroughly.